every good consultant knows that the proper slide master is indispensable for making great slides. And they also know that the default slide master provided by PowerPoint is ugly as hell. I mean, look at it. Oh, Jesus! Oh, God! Oh, oh, Jesus! God! Oh, Mary, Mother of Jesus! Jesus of Nazareth! So yeah, we can definitely do better than that. In this video, we'll show you what a proper master looks like. One that you can quickly set up yourself and it already looks so professional that it could carry a multi-million dollar McKinsey presentation. Let's go! First we go into the view section on the ribbon and select slide master here. On the left you can see all the individual layouts that are part of this master. Right now we're on the title layout. If we scroll up we see this slide which is sort of the mother slide of the master. All the layouts underneath will inherit a number of key properties from the mother slide. Now we're going to do three things. First, delete all the layouts that we currently have. Second, make a proper mother slide, which is the most important part. And third, we create our two main layouts, which is a regular content slide and a title slide. All right, first, let's delete everything here. Now, we cannot delete all the layouts because the title page layout is currently being used. So we'll leave the slide master view by clicking close master view and then we delete the title page. Now we can go back into the master view and we can delete the last layout as well. Now we have a clean slate. Perfect. Step two, we make a proper mother slide. I'd start with a nicer font in the title. Nothing inherently wrong with Calibri, but it looks a bit boring. Now you don't want to be flashy, that's clear. It's just that the default option is often worn out a bit. Arial and Bold is probably the most used title font in corporates worldwide and you can't go wrong with it. But for a bit more modern look, let's take Bondshrift and let's bold it. And let's make it significantly smaller, otherwise you won't even get a proper action title in there. There's nothing wrong with font size 28 or even just 25. Speaking of font size, we need to make sure that the font doesn't get downsized if there's too much text in the text box. That's a real deal breaker and you don't want to have different font sizes across all your titles. So you go into Format Shape, then Text Options, and then this text box menu here. Here you want to select Resize Shape to fit text and also tick on Wrap Text in Shape. Then we make the text bottom aligned so that the lower edge of the title will always stay in the same position. If it's a one-line title or if it's a two-line title, doesn't matter. The lower bound is always fixed. Reaching a second title line will just extend the text box upwards. And you never want to have a title that exceeds two lines anyways. But having a fixed lower bound is important so that basically the canvas you're working on, this central space, is always nicely defined. Also, let's reduce all the margins in the title text box to zero. The reason is that when we want to align text, but there's a margin between the text and the edge of the text box, it will never truly look aligned. You can align it with the edge of the text box, or you can try and fiddle around to make it seem aligned, but that's not proper alignment. If your margins are reduced to zero, text and object can be easily aligned, even with the snapping options of PowerPoint. One more thing we can think about is making the title a bit wider. The title has quite a margin to the edge of the slide, which is a bit of wasted space. In slide design, the width of the title also defines the perimeter of the central working area. You don't want any of your content to exceed the title to the left or to the right, so making the title a bit wider gives us more space to work with. And since we decreased the font size, we can also move the title up a bit. And now we just delete these boxes right here. A footer and the date is not very typical in a layout, but the page number is useful. Simply put it where you want it to be and format it. Ideally use the same font as in the title and align it nicely. And take out the margins in the text box. And there we have it. The mother slide is done. In step three, we make our first layouts. The first is simply our standard content slide. 
Let's right click here and say insert layout. Now this basically looks like the mother slide and that's perfect. We don't need to do anything here. We can just rename the layout and call it default. Now let's insert another layout, which is our title page. Let's rename it to title and then move it up into the first spot. This is where the title layout belongs. Now we can play around again and format the title page as we like. For example, we can bring down the title a bit and increase the font size. Then we can add some placeholders, which we format in a similar fashion as the title. We just give it a different label. Let's call it document type. Now you can always label the document correctly, such as team meeting or shareholder meeting or draft document or something like that. Maybe you also want to add another placeholder for the date, for example. The title page shouldn't show the page number, so we can simply delete this placeholder. Now let's add a logo. Pretty much any slide has a company logo or something like that, or a university logo if you're a student or a professor. We'll typically put it either in the top right corner or bottom right corner. Just resize it, align it, and you're fine. Notice how we're putting the logo in the layout and not the mother slide. If we put it on the mother slide, it will also appear on the title page. Instead, let's put the logo in here, into the layout. And on the title page, we can position the logo differently and also make it bigger. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now we're almost done. Two more things. First, let's change the color scheme. The default PowerPoint colors feel a bit old school and worn out. So at the very least, you can select a different palette. Something like blue here. That looks decent. Or you customize the colors and change it to your corporate colors. And second, let's change the default text box and default object formatting. Now, if we insert a text box right here, you can already see that it looks bad. It's Calibri font and it has margins. Let's make it the same font as the title. Change the font size to 16, which is more reasonable. And make the necessary changes here too. Resize shape to fit text. Wrap text in shape and make all the margins zero. And now we just right click on the text box and click set as default text box. Now any new text box that you insert will automatically look like this. You can customize your default text box even more, but that's a good start already. And now we draw a shape like a rectangle and format it the way we like. For example, we can change the default color. But this here seems fine. So let's just say no outline. And change the font to our default font. And that's it. Now right click and set as default shape. Any new shape we now add will be formatted this way by default, which is a good starting point. And that's it. We're done. With this master, you can get going and easily create beautiful presentations. You can, of course, add more layouts. If there's some type of layout you find yourself using frequently, why not add it to the master? We have here a few different standard layouts, such as a 50-50 split page, or one that has one quarter of the slide shaded, where we can put, for example, a summary text box. Or a quote. Also, you can add an entirely new master, which looks exactly the same, but has a different theme. Like this one, with a dark theme. So yeah, these are all the basics you need to know about slide masters. Now we've come a long way already. From this... To this. 
And that's the perfect foundation. But that's not all you need for your PowerPoint journey. There's much more to be said about slide design and storytelling. And if you want to know more, subscribe and hit the bell. We'll keep publishing more on this and show you how to make your presentations look like a million bucks. Let us know in the comments below if you have any questions or if there's a topic you'd like us to cover next. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.